What I'll do is when my steak is done, I'll put the steak on a platter and then I will take the egg whites, put the egg whites on top of the steak and then I will take the egg yolks as they are raw and I will pour it over the steak and it almost becomes like a steak sauce. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to another Sunday Q&A. Today's question is with regard to what I eat in a day. But before I answer that question, I'd just like to ask that if you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to smash that like button so I know to continue making these types of videos. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. Now onto the question. Nicholas F. asks, how long have you been carnivore? What do you typically eat in a day? Well, Nicholas, I already made three different what I eat in a day videos, but this happens to come at the perfect time because I do plan on changing up my rotation this week and I just ordered a new batch of food. So this is the perfect time to make another what I eat in a day video. With regard to this video, if you want to skip ahead to one particular food item, I will be including timestamps in the description. So if you don't want to go through the entire list, you can skip ahead to a particular topic. I'm going to cover every single thing that I eat and I will also discuss how exactly I prepare it. So if there's a particular recipe that you want to figure out how to make, go ahead, look in the timestamps in the description and skip ahead to that section. Now, with regard to the foods, the first food that I'm going to mention, this has been a staple for the last three or four months and I'm going to continue using this moving forward. And that is medium ground beef and beef liver. This is actually what I had today for breakfast before I made this video. Today it is Friday, I'm going to be uploading this on Sunday, but that was my meal for today. When it comes to medium ground beef and beef liver, I like to have this on days that I train upper body. So on my push pull days, there's no real reason behind it. Well, there is a little bit of a reason. On my push pull days, I don't exert as much energy as I do on my deadlifting or my squatting days. And when I do consume medium ground beef and beef liver, it is a little bit less calorie dense. So that is why I like to consume it on my push pull day, just because I don't need as much energy and as many calories to get through my workout. With regard to quantity, the medium ground beef and the beef liver, everything comes pre-packaged. I order most of my stuff from Brooker's Natural Meats and they come in one pound packages. Typically the way I'll prepare this meal is I will take the beef liver and I will put it in my Ninja Blender and I'll pulse it about four or five times until it's nice and chopped up. The reason I do that is because liver is a little bit of a pain to cut on the cutting board. It's very, very slippery. If I put it in the blender and just do four or five really quick pulses, it's the same as cutting it. It doesn't come out too fine and it just makes my life a little bit easier. So I'll chop it up inside the blender and then I will add medium ground beef. I will cook that in my cast iron skillet and I will cook it using one quarter cup of grass fed butter. Well, then what will happen is I will place a lid on it. The lid allows the steam to build up and that will add a little bit more volume in terms of more water. And towards the end, what I'll do is I'll just add some salt. When it comes to my salt consumption, I'll do anywhere from 12 to 15 turns of my Himalayan sea salt. I have a grinder. I don't use an actual fine Himalayan sea salt that's already ground up. The one that I have, you have to grind it yourself. So I'll do about 12 to 15 turns of the grinder on that. And once that's done, I'll mix it up a little bit more, put the lid on. Once that's all done, then I will convert it into my little pot. In my pot, I'll put some in the pot, then I'll add either Parmesan or blue cheese. I've just been doing this recently. I haven't really done that in the past before, but it does really bring out the flavor and it gives it a really nice flavor by adding the blue cheese and the Parmesan. Then I will eat it just like that. I will have half in the morning for breakfast and then I will have half after my workout. So I'll have roughly one pound of food in the morning, one pound of food at night. And that is my meal on my pushing and pull days. Not every push and pull day, but if I do have this meal, it's typically on a day where I do my push and pull. The next meal, this has also been a staple of mine for probably the last six months. It's a top sirloin steak. The top sirloin steak, I also get these from Brooker's Natural Meats and it comes in pre-packaged containers. They're each 650 to one kilo. If it's a 650 gram steak, that's really not a lot of meat for me. So if it is 650 grams, I'll typically add about three eggs to the meal for breakfast and then I'll add another three for dinner. If it's closer to the one kilo mark, then all I will have is that one steak. And in terms of how I prepare it, what I'll do for the steak is if I am having a one kilo steak, all I'm gonna do for this is just grill it on the barbecue. I'm going to blast the heat, wait for the barbecue to reach about 500 degrees. Then I will turn the heat all the way down, 
put it on the grill for three minutes, 30 seconds, flip it another three minutes, 30 seconds, and then that will get it to a medium rare temperature. The reason that I like to cook it that way is just because I prefer my steaks medium rare. If you don't like medium rare, you prefer a little bit more well done, you could cook it a little bit longer. That's just the way how I like it. Now, if I'm consuming a steak that's only 650 grams, then I will add in some eggs to add in a little bit more calories. One of the reasons being, typically I'll have this meal when I do my deadlifts. I love having top sirloin steak and I love having it on my deadlift day. I just feel really good and I feel like it benefits me when I do my deadlifts. I have a little bit more energy and it's not really too heavy on my stomach, so it's perfect for the days that I do my deadlifts. With regard to how I prepare the eggs, I will typically separate the egg whites from the egg yolks and then with the egg whites, I'll add about a teaspoon of blue cheese, a little bit of Parmesan cheese in there. Then I will cook it like that. The egg yolks, I'll just set those aside. What I'll do is when my steak is done, I'll put the steak on a platter and then I will take the egg whites, put the egg whites on top of the steak and then I will take the egg yolks as they are raw and I will pour it over the steak and it almost becomes like a steak sauce. Really, really delicious. If you wanna try it, I highly recommend it. Just separate the whites from the yolks Cook the whites, pour the yolks either directly on the steaks or you can put the whites on the steak and then put the egg yolks over top. Either way, it tastes absolutely delicious. If you want the egg yolks to be a little bit more creamy and not so much runny, then what you could do is add a tablespoon of blue cheese to the egg yolks, mix it up a little bit, and then it comes out like a thick paste. It really is delicious. If you want to try it, give it a try. Next is going to be the sirloin tip roast. This has also been a staple of mine for the last about four months. And this is also something that I pick up from Brokers Natural Meats. This right over here, the sirloin tip roast that I've been getting lately, they didn't have the ones that I normally get. Normally I'll get a two to three pound roast. They only have the four to six pound roast in stock. So when I'm having a sirloin tip roast, I will have this one two days back to back. And typically when I have this one, I will have it on my squat day and on my push and pull day. The way I will prepare this one is I will cut it up in half. I will put one half on each side of the crock pot. I will take one cup of homemade bone broth. I will put the bone broth inside the crock pot. Then I will take two cups of water, put the two cups of water inside the crock pot. I will then take a quarter cup of ghee, put the ghee in the crock pot, let it heat up just a little bit, not until it's boiling, but just so that it's a little bit warm. Then I will salt my sirloin tip roast and I will spray it with some MCT oil. Once all that's done, I will put it in the crock pot. Once it's ready for me in the morning, then I will take a couple forks and I will shred it. Once I've shredded it, then I will add some Parmesan cheese to it, put it in my bowl, add some blue cheese to it, and I will just consume it like that. The one thing that I really love about adding the blue cheese and the Parmesan cheese to the sirloin tip roast is that it makes it so much more tender. I don't know if it's the blue cheese that makes it more tender, but ever since I started adding the blue cheese to the sirloin tip roast, it is phenomenal. It just breaks apart in your mouth. You don't even have to chew if you don't want to. You could just swallow it and it would go down no problem. So that is one of my favorite meals. The second day that I make it, typically what happens, and it comes out even better, is I will reuse the water from the crock pot from the sirloin tip that I just made. And then as opposed to when I make it the first time where I make it at night and then shred it in the morning, this time around, because I already have the sirloin tip roast defrosted from the night prior, I will put it in right before I eat the sirloin tip roast for breakfast. I will do the exact same thing. Though whatever water's in there, I'll add about a cup and a half to two cups of water, just enough that it covers the entire roast. I'll prepare it the same way. I'll salt it, I'll spray it with some MCT oil, put it in the crock pot, then this time around what happens is when I get home from work at night, I will shred it at night and then I will let it sit in its juices throughout the entire day. Sometimes I'll also add Parmesan cheese the night before. Sometimes I'll add it the morning of as I'm cooking it. It really depends on what I feel like doing. If I add it the night before, it does give it a little bit more thickness and it does have a little bit more volume, which is a little bit more satiating. But what I'll do is I will shred it when I get home at night. I will add the Parmesan cheese, mix it, and then I'll just cover it, leave it on the warm setting. And then the next morning it's all ready for me. All I have to do is just put it into my container. And what I'll do this time around is I have a glass little jar with a glass lid. So I'll take my glass jar, I'll place the shredded sirloin tip roast in that glass jar until the bottom of the jar is covered. Once the bottom of the jar is covered, I'll sprinkle some blue cheese on there. Then I will add more until the blue cheese layer 
layer is covered, then I will add another layer of blue cheese, then I will add one more layer of meat until that final layer of blue cheese is covered. Then I will put the glass lid over it, let it sit in there while I clean my crock pot. Once I've cleaned my crock pot, then I will go ahead and eat, but first what I'll do is take the lid off and I'll just mix it up a little bit. By doing that, it comes out really, really tender. If you've never tried it that way, try it that way. It is phenomenal. That's pretty much it for when it comes to the meals that I've already been doing for the last three months. I just recently put in a new order with Brookers and with another company and I picked up some new items and I'm going to be adding these to the rotation. The first one is going to be sirloin burgers. When it comes to the sirloin burgers, what I plan on doing is having three for breakfast, three for dinner, possibly four and four. I'm gonna see how exactly I feel with three and three. If I feel like it's not enough, then I'll up it to four and four. They're five ounces each, so that's gonna be anywhere from 15 to 20 ounces for breakfast, 15 to 20 for dinner. And the way I'm gonna make it is just put it up on the grill, add a little bit of sea salt, and that's going to be it. Pretty simple, I'm not gonna do anything too complex with this one. This is probably gonna be my easiest meal that I make out of all the meals that I do make. And that's going to take us to my final meal, which is going to be bacon-wrapped beef tenderloin. This is something that I am adding in, and this is not from Brooker's Natural Meats. This one is from McGregor's Meats, and this company over here, if I don't know if you have the keg in the United States, but in Canada we have the keg, and McGregor's Meats is the one that supplies the keg with their food. Just a quick side note, back about five or six years ago, I had an athlete, she was a basketball player, and she was a high school athlete, and when she was playing for her basketball team. Her basketball team had a fundraiser and they were selling McGregor's meats. So I ended up buying about 55 pounds of meat off of this girl. And one of the things that I got were the bacon wrapped tenderloins and I absolutely love these. So for the longest time I tried to order them but they only ever supplied restaurants with the meat. They never did any private sales. I decided to check them out again last week, see if they changed their mind, and sure enough, they now have an online store, and I was able to pick some up, so I ended up buying 120 of these bacon wrap beef tenderloin because they were so delicious the first time that I tried them. So this is going to be in my rotation probably for the next two or three months minimum. But the way I plan on making these is the same as the sirloin burgers. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna take four of them. They are four ounces each, so that's going to be 16 ounces, which is one pound. Have one pound for breakfast, one pound for dinner. All I'm gonna do is add a little bit of sea salt to it, put it on the grill, cook it until the tenderloin is about medium rare, and then I'm going to eat it just like that. Pretty straightforward, very easy to make, very delicious. If you enjoy meat, if you enjoy bacon, and if you enjoy tenderloin, then bacon wrapped tenderloin is definitely something that you should incorporate if you are doing the carnivore diet. If you're not a fan of bacon or it doesn't make you feel good, then you don't have to do it, but for me, I absolutely love it. I generally don't do well with pork, but bacon is one of those things that doesn't seem to upset me, especially if I have it in small amounts. So if I do have it in small amounts, it doesn't affect me, which is why I plan on having the bacon wrapped tenderloins because they are delicious and the bacon doesn't upset my stomach. That covers it for all of my main meals. Now, when it comes to snacks, some of the snacks that I do consume while on the carnivore diet are going to be pork rinds, goat parmesan, and goat cheddar. When it comes to the pork rinds, the ones that I get are the UTZ brands. They sell it at Costco. I don't know where else you can find it. If you are in the United States, you could probably find it at Sam's Club, but that's where I get it. Pretty good price. I think it's $11 for a 510 gram package which is significantly cheaper than if you just buy baconettes or if you buy something in a smaller serving size. The baconettes, they are, I believe, $3 for a 70 gram pack. So there, it is a decent amount of savings if you do buy the 510 gram pack. Next, with the goat parmesan and the goat cheddar, these I also pick up from Brooker's Natural Meats. I just wanna say as a side note, Brooker's Natural Meats does not pay me to say any of this. I just enjoy their products and their food is really good and it's a good affordable price. I was getting all my meats before from ButcherBox, but I find that Brooker's Natural Meats, the meats are just as good and the prices are much better. The serving sizes, the one drawback is that with ButcherBox, the serving sizes are exact. If you order a five ounce steak, you're gonna get a five ounce steak. The one thing with Brooker's Natural Meats that isn't quite as convenient as ButcherBox is that the serving sizes aren't going to be exact. As I said with the sirloin tip roast, it does come in different sizes. Sometimes it'll be 650, sometimes it'll be a kilo, sometimes it'll be anywhere in between. So if you are somebody who likes to have exact serving sizes just to make your life more simple, butcher box would be preferable. If you'd prefer to save a little bit more money and you don't really care about having an exact serving size, then Brooker's Natural Meats is gonna be really, really good. Again though, I do live in Canada, so if you do live in the United States, you won't have 
access to brokers natural meats. However, there is ButcherBox in the United States. So go ahead. And if you don't like to use ButcherBox because it's a little expensive, then go ahead and find another meat company that you can use that is affordable or fits your price range. Anyway, back to the snacks that I consume. Over the last month or two, in terms of cheeses, I typically don't eat too much cheese because it does upset my stomach, but I find that with goat cheese, it isn't as bad. Same thing with sheep or with water buffalo cheese. Those ones don't seem to upset me, so I do incorporate those ones a little bit. What I have been doing lately is I get the goat Parmesan cheese and the goat cheddar. And at nighttime, if I do get a little bit hungry, what I'll do is I'll just get a handful of pork rinds and I will have one quarter of the Parmesan or the goat cheddar stick. The sticks are roughly 200 to 250 grams each. They're not exact as with the meats, the measurements are a little bit off. So I, I'll typically have anywhere from 50 to about 60 grams of cheese with a handful of pork rinds at night. That is if I am feeling really hungry at night. I don't always have that, it's a snack. So if I feel like I have to snack on something, then that's what I will pick as a snack. But those are pretty much all the foods that I consume throughout the course of a week while I'm on the carnivore diet. Now I'm gonna just quickly recap all the foods that I consume. So one of my meals is going to be medium ground beef and beef liver. The medium ground beef comes in one pound packs, so does the beef liver. I will combine those and have half for breakfast, half for lunch. The way I'll prepare it is with a quarter cup of grass-fed butter. Another one of my meals is going to be top sirloin steak. That I will cook it up on the barbecue. All I add is a little bit of salt. It's anywhere from 650 grams to a kilo. If it's 650, I'll add about three eggs. If it's a kilo, I'll have it by itself. If it's anywhere in between, I'll have a couple eggs. Next is gonna be the sirloin tip roast. The sirloin tip roast, it's gonna be anywhere from two to two and a half pounds per serving that I have throughout the day. So I'll have anywhere from one to one and a quarter pounds in the morning, one to one and a quarter at night. And I will cook that in the crock pot and I will add some Parmesan cheese and some blue cheese just to bring out the flavor, make it a little bit more tender, taste delicious. And I will use a little bit of homemade bone broth, particularly beef bone broth in the crock pot when I'm making this one. Next is going to be the sirloin burgers. Haven't done this one yet, but I do plan on having anywhere from three to four in the morning, three to four at night. They're five ounces each, so it'll be anywhere from 15 to 20 ounces for breakfast, 15 to 20 ounces for dinner, and those are gonna be cooked up on the grill. So I'm just gonna barbecue those ones, pretty simple. All I'm gonna add is sea salt. Lastly, it's going to be the bacon wrapped tenderloin. This is going to be exactly the same as the sirloin burgers. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt, grill them up, medium rare, perfect, the way I like it. That's pretty much it in terms of all the foods that I, differ, that I eat and in terms of my snacks, again, pork rinds, goat parmesan, goat cheddar. That's pretty much what I eat throughout the course of a week. That pretty much covers it for today's video and that is everything that I eat throughout the course of a week. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more of these types of Q&A videos, be sure to smash that like button so I know to continue making these types of Q&A videos. And if you're either new to the channel or not subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. Thanks for tuning in, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you again tomorrow.